before ninth grade, <clears throat> did you ever play volleyball for fun or anything? Or you know, I I mm. kind of had played a little bit mm. over there. There was a, a group of men over there that I was able to kind of start playing with. Mm. Um, they were they let me kind of enter their games, but there was no kids playing. It was just a little taste of it. So like I said, when I showed up here, it was just like the floodgates opened. <laughs> um, and you know, back on the Big Island, I like I said, I got bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. My uncle Tony in 1984, he was the assistant coach for the mm -hmm. men's Olympic team. So they had been living in San Diego, him and his family. Mm -hmm. And you know we had traveled up there a little bit, kind of got a little exposure to that. But I, I kind of remember my mom saying, "Hey, I'm gonna go up to LA this weekend and watch Tony, yeah. you know, be in the Olympics." Yeah. And, and there's no internet, you know. There's no, there was no social media. Mm -hmm. You maybe heard of bits and pieces on the news or in the newspaper, but after the fact, you know, they won the gold medal. It's the first time the U.S. won, and it was kind of like, "Whoa, this is this volleyball thing is kind of cool." Yeah. And then he came home and he was the assistant coach at UH. Mm -hmm. And they, they were on TV, so you'd see, you know, the UH men were on TV, you mm -hmm. could see it in Hilo. So that kind of exposure gave me a little taste of it. And I was kind of like, oh, this volleyball thing. And then I was fortunate enough to get into Punahou and make that move over here. And again, once I got here, it was just kind of like, okay, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is the way to go here. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, when you, when you got here to Punahou, ninth grade, you know, yeah. obviously there's a lot of people playing volleyball around you, a lot of high level talent, you know, not only at Punahou, but above and beyond. Yeah. And for you, it was probably just being like thrown into the fire. Yeah. So during that time, were there, were there certain people that really helped you or shaped you as a volleyball uh, player growing through your career? Yeah, there were, when I got here that summer of 89, the class of 89 at Punahou had a really strong group of guys. Their, their boys team had won the States. <laughs> And my sister at the time was dating a guy on the team. His name was Kanoa Oshram, who lives in Seattle now. Mm -hmm. And it was nice because I showed up here. I was kind of like the young brother, mm -hmm. my sister's boyfriend. And he and that group of guys who all went on to play, Lee Legrand, Kanoa Oshram, mm -hmm. Stevie Lee, all these guys all were playing. They were all off to college that summer. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, I'm here and I'm watching them come back and play UH, win national championships. And you know, there's just I think with volleyball, there's a it's it's a small world. Mm -hmm. It's a real small community. Even though you're, you know, if you play basketball, I don't know how good a chance you would to be playing with all Americans. And <laughs> yeah. you know, it's it's such a bigger sports world. But mm -hmm. it's like a fraternity. And the Outrigger and Puno has a mm -hmm. such strong fraternity of great players that from you know the oldest guys down to the youngest everybody kind of knows each other and mm -hmm. there's kind of this pecking order where you always want to beat the older guys <laughs> but at the same time a lot of them are real welcoming and mentor you know they're like mentors so they kind of mm -hmm. bring you in and that group of guys a little ahead of me were real you know real welcoming and then that kind of triggered it mm -hmm. as far as getting in with the guys a year below them and a year below them and even guys older than them yeah. but it just kind of set off this whole network that i became a part of and